Hi everyone, my name is Robin Lewis, and in this video, I had a go at steam bending and chair building. Two things that I have never tried before. So it was a lot of fun, I learned a lot. Hopefully this video is gonna be some inspiration to you, if not at least give you some ideas on building a chair of your own. All right, with that said, let's get into it. I'm gonna start by creating the form for steam bending the legs. This is made up of three 16 millimeter MDF panels. Once those have been glued together, I can draw the 200 mil radius and create the shape. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the steaming and bending process. I did that in my previous video, which I'll link to, and there are heaps of resources out there about that. But all I'm doing here is creating a form, giving it some holes for the clamps to fit through, and then smoothing it off so that the wood flows and bends around it as easily as possible. The majority of this project is gonna be made using Tasmanian oak, which is a very pale blonde timber. To add a bit of contrast, I'm using this piece of recycled, what I think is Moreton Bay ash. I got this off a building site and they used to use this quite a lot in the building practice. So I'll cut this down, create a few strips of it, and then I can inlay this between the Tasmanian oak. This wood was incredibly dry, so I put it into the steam box for a couple days and just lightly steamed it to try and bring the moisture content up and try and make it more supple. And while that was going on, I could get down to cutting the Tasmanian oak into thin strips. Okay, so all of the strips have been milled down to thickness. They're at three millimeters, which is a bit thinner than the test that I did. So these should bend really nicely. There's gonna be nine of them in a stack. So this is a nice big chunky piece that you're gonna end up with. Okay, well, there's nothing left but to get this timber over into the steamer. Um, this is where it all becomes very uh, real. Up until this point, I'd put in a lot of work into milling those boards down. And once they come out of the steamer, you only have minutes to get it onto the form. So this was a very, very tense process. All right, 80 degrees at 132. This first bend went fine, but this was the first time I'd properly got the timber up to temperature. So you can see my fingers really struggling here because the timber is so hot. In the second bend, I put on gloves, which made a huge difference, but I also used a strap around the, the strips. This not only improved the bend, but it also improved the, the process. It sped it up, which is really important. You wanna get these bends as quickly as possible as they come out of the steam. I've let this timber cool now for a couple of hours, so the next step is gonna to be to put wood glue in between and laminate them together. This is basically gonna be the same process as the steam bending. I'll take them off the form, put glue in between, bring them back onto the form and clamp them in place. I wanna point out that all of this wood is kiln dried as opposed to the much better bending air dried. But one of the goals of this project is I wanted to use wood that was easily accessible and readily available. So all of the wood in this project has come from my local home center. Yes, air dried timber will bend better, but you can still bend kiln dried. Once the glue on the legs had dried, I took it out of the form and then used a router jig to flatten one face. The next thing I want to do is parallel this face with this face. I am really happy with that result. Oh, this is gonna look so good when it's done. Then I simply repeated the process to create another leg. After that, I moved on to the slats, and as a contrasting piece, I'm gonna be using some Merbau decking. So there'll be three strips, Tasmanian oak on either side with Merbau running through the middle. For this form, I'm gonna be using pine, and I start by cutting it so I can get a 100 degree angle from the horizontal up to the vertical. This is a standard angle for chairs. Thank you. 
You'll also notice I've made two forms and that's gonna make a bit more sense later on. Adding that stop lock at the front of the form was hugely important because later on, when it comes time to glue these slats in place, that point, that front of the slat is gonna be my reference point so all of the slats will line up. That is a successful, successful first bend. 10 more to go. <laughs> I've taken that first bend off the mold. Now we're gonna move it onto a second mold. It's an identical mold. And this is where I'm gonna do the glue up. And then this can sit in the form, in the, the glue up form overnight while I get back to steaming. And after all that, I'm left with a bunch of these strips. There's 11 of them. In hindsight, if I'd been a bit smarter, I would have made a number of forms. That would have sped up the process quite significantly. But the, the thought behind having only the one form was that I'd have a much better chance of making sure that all of these strips, all of these laminations are exactly the same. The next thing I'm gonna do is space these slats out. So I need to, that's a terrible picture. Okay, so if you imagine this is a side profile of the chair, I'm gonna be adding three bits of wood, one here towards the top, one further down, and one over here. These are going to split the slats evenly, but they're also going to attach to the rails of the leg assembly later on. The next thing is to work out the height of the seat. And what I've done in the past, whenever I've made things like stools, is just grab something in the shop, take a seat, and then, oh, hello. That way I can sit, pretend I'm on the chair, get a feel. I might grab a, a two by four, put that underneath. There we go, that's starting to feel a bit better. And then simply take a measurement of that. Before marking out for the mortises, I clamped the two boards together and then marked out both of them at the same time. This just ensures that the mortise is on the same height on both legs. Then I could hog out the majority of the material using a spade bit and then I could cut the inside edges using a router. You'll notice I've got this piece of square stock clamped to the outside of the legs and this is what the router fence is going to run along. This is just going to help to ensure that the internal edges of that mortise are flat and perpendicular. The outside of that leg is mostly straight but it's not as straight as that square stock. I've set up the chair and now with the front rail in place, I can work out where the back rail is gonna be for the slat. And this curve right here, this is what I've gotta think about next. This is probably gonna be the trickiest bit about attaching these slats. So with this in place, you can see that's the angle that I'm shooting for. And my first thought was to just take the rail, cut an angle onto it, and then sit the slat against the rail. But the problem is then the tenon becomes a lot smaller and to cut that mortise is also quite tricky. So what I'm gonna do instead is attach this rail with the full mortise and tenon just below the slat and then between the rail and the slat I'm going to create a triangle piece which will slot in and that's what the slat's going to sit against. I've worked out this angle is 31 degrees so I'll do a couple test cuts first and then I can make a that triangle shaped piece out of some Tasmanian oak. I've cleaned up that angle piece this is ready for glue 
this will eventually take this strip which will sit against it over there. I've taken the chair apart. This is the back rail that this angled piece is gonna sit on. Sit like that and then take this strip like that. Now, what I'm gonna do next is cut this angled piece to follow this line. Now, where it becomes a bit tricky is once I cut that angle and I try and clamp these two together, I'm not gonna have opposing angles. So what I did to get around that was add some dowels under this piece over here. Even though that's gonna be on an angle and I'm gonna be squeezing and it's gonna to wanna to slide apart, those dowels are gonna hold it together. So the dowels aren't really there for strength, they're just there as locating pins. Okay, here's the plan. I have practiced this glue up a couple times now, so this should work. So these slats, I've clamped one of them on the back here. This one over here gets put in place. These are just being, these two uh, strips are being held in place by clamps, and I'm going to be gluing the slats onto each one of these. So I'm only gonna do three at a time, that's so that I can get the clamps in, and I'm gonna be clamping to the front and the back strip. Then once I've clamped all of the slats onto these strips, I can then pull the entire assembly away. The glue's finished drying on all of these slats. So the next thing I'm gonna to do to reinforce this, this joint is run a dowel up through the strip into each one of the slats. The main force that I'm trying to combat here is sheer force. And while I have no doubt that wood glue is incredibly strong, this is a cross grain joint. So it's not as strong as a long grain joint. Adding these dowels is just an insurance against the slats slipping, even if it might be a bit overkill. Here I'm gluing on the third and final strip to the top of the assembly, and I'm using those two boards in between just to make sure that the spacing is accurate. Less measuring for me generally means less mistakes. To finish, I used two coats of Danish oil with light sanding in between, and that was it. That brings us to today. So I am incredibly happy with how this one turned out. Obviously, there's a lot of things I might change if I was to redo it, and there's a couple of mistakes here and there. But overall, as a first chair, super pumped with how it turned out. Just a quick thanks to Joey from King Post Timberworks for sort of giving me that push to try something new and try something different. And I also wanna say a really big thank you to everyone on Instagram who's been leaving just amazingly positive and encouraging messages. It really means a lot when you're trying something new and it's something a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So my name is Robin Lewis. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more of these types of videos, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe and click on that bell icon. That'll just make sure that you see new videos as they come out. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Come to take a seat as well. Come check what I'm doing. I'm, I'm kind of filming though, and you're really standing in the worst place possible. So do you mind if I carry on? Is that possible? You might need to just move along. Yeah, I, I could see that, but I can't play right now because I'm busy. Thank you.